Okay, so this week's science challenge is to produce an effervescent rocket. Now, in order to do this challenge, you're going to need some of these tablets that you can get from the supermarket. So these tablets are effervescent tablets and they come in this plastic tube, which we're going to use to produce the body of the rocket. And the tablets are going to provide the fuel for the rocket. So um, the first thing to do is to take the lid off and pour the tablets out. Put them to the side somewhere safe. OK, you're going to be coming back to use those later. You may want to use one so you can put one into your drink. OK, and um, save the rest for the rest of the experiment. Take your tube and you're going to need to now decorate this, make it look a bit more like a rocket. Now you can decorate it however you want. It may be um, that you want to do what I'm doing, which is making some nice rainbow colours around the rocket, going with the theme from the last video. Or you may want to do something completely different. You may want to make a nose cone. Now the nose cone should go onto the sealed end of the rocket, okay? Because you're going to need to leave the other end open so that you can pour the chemicals in later on. One important thing to remember when decorating your rocket is not to make it too heavy because if it's really heavy, it won't take off very easily. OK, so the lighter the better, if you want to get it to go really high in the sky. Right, I'm going to do this in sped up time now, then decorating my rocket so you don't have to watch me go through the process really slowly. OK, so now that we've decorated our rocket, um, we need to think about what chemicals we're going to put into the rocket to make it have the reaction that's going to send it up into the sky. Now, I'm aware my decorating isn't the best. I'm sure you've decorated yours a lot better. Um, the first step is to add the water into our rocket. So turn it up the other way and I'm going to add the water using this measuring jug. The reason I'm doing that is because it's going to make it easier to pour it into there without me spilling it and ruining my design. The second reason it's in a measuring jug is that we can take the measuring jug of water outside with us if we decide we want to have another go at setting up this chemical reaction outside, another go at setting off our rocket. When you pour the water in, you need to have about an inch of water. OK, so for my rocket, it's about up to the red level. Once you put the water in, you need to then take a tissue and tear the tissue, pull the tissue, so that you've just got one layer of tissue. Tear off a corner. Okay, and then tuck it into the top of your tube. So it's got a little dip there. Into the dip, you're going to place several pieces of the tablets. Okay, and then the lid goes on over the top nice and tight really nice tight seal if you want to at this point you can tear off the excess tissue just to make it look a little bit neater but that's not essential okay so now that we've got our chemical reactants in there we've got the water and the tablets now is the stage where we're going to take it outside to set off the reaction now you mustn't turn it upside down up the other way sorry until you are ready for the reaction to actually start because as soon as you tip it back up the other way the water is going to run down and soak through the tissue and start to react with the tablets when it does that it's going to produce a gas that's what causes the effervescence or bubbling when these things react now when gas starts to build up inside a closed container like this it creates something called pressure now, pressure is caused when the gas particles, which are moving around very fast, are colliding with the walls of the container. As more gas particles build up in there, they're going to collide with the walls, walls more and more, creating more pressure. And the place where the walls are weakest is actually on the lid, because the lid can come off. So eventually, when the pressure is so high, the gas particles bumping against the lid are going to be enough to actually force the lid off. Because the rocket's going to be up the other way, this is also going to cause the rocket to be forced up into the air. It should be really exciting. Now, when you do this experiment outside, you must make sure that there are that you've got a nice clear space around you so you don't lose your rocket on someone's roof, for example. And you must make sure that there's not anybody who is standing too close, because if it falls on their head, it could be a little bit, um, could, could bonk them on the head a little bit. So make sure that everybody, including yourself, is five metres back when this rocket goes off. All you need to do, 
go to that open space, flip it up the other way and put it on the floor and then step back and wait. Don't approach the rocket until you're sure that it's either it's, it's gone off or it's, um, it's definitely, definitely not going to go off at all because it might be that there perhaps was a little gap and some of the uh, gas was leaking, which is why it might not have gone off. But do be absolutely sure. Wait at least 10 minutes before you go and check to see if it's not gone off. Okay, right, so we're going to take this outside now and have a go. Let's see what happens. <laughs> 